Uh, as you put it, the sleeping giant has awoken earlier than anticipated. It has the fact that it's awoken earlier, caught people wrong-footed. And uh, what do you make of the, the uh, immediate impact of this? Well, it's a great boost for the for the airline industry. As you know, we were you know waiting uh, with bated breath for China to drop uh, its uh, long-standing zero COVID strategy. And now uh, China has uh, brought forward uh, their plans to reopen uh, because everyone was expecting this to take place sometime in the later part of uh, 2023. So it's a big boost uh, for the airline industry and uh, not only for, for travelers uh, from China, but also for international visitors to go into China. China is the largest market uh, by far in terms of outbound as well as inbound travel. You know? So it is a great uh, development. Uh, and it's come uh, sooner than expected, so naturally I think uh, uh, the industry needs to uh, race uh, to be able to uh, um, you know, meet the uh, expectations and demand uh, of the travel market. And I've said before, you, you don't expect airlines to, to really shift capacity from what they're doing now in China. What would it take for, for some of your members to really start ramping up flights there? Well, I think the, the planning is already uh, uh, in place. I think uh, some airlines have uh, already uh, put in uh, uh, as many flights as they can. You know, uh, As you know, the industry was already uh, uh, strugg struggling to ramp up uh, flights uh, to meet the uh, uh, surge in demand since uh, June of uh, 2022. Uh, so I guess uh, you know they, they need to work harder. They need to push harder to get their resources, not only uh, aircraft, but also uh, staff uh, in place. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we have seen some governments uh, uh, overreacting, you know, as they did in the past, you know, knee-jerk reactions mm. uh, by uh, requiring uh, testing requirements uh, for travelers uh, from China. Um, and uh, some, some uh, uh, governments are even going further than that. For example, India, you know, is requiring uh, people coming from uh, even uh, outside China, like Singapore, Malaysia, mm -hmm. Thailand, Japan and Korea also to be tested, you know, which uh, basically, uh, you know, disregards the science on the issue, you know, and uh, this will also yeah. uh, slow the ability of uh, the industry to meet the uh, demand. So well, let's talk about Hong Kong as an aviation hub here as well. Cathay just uh, reports that they've, uh, they're doubling their flights to China. This must be a huge lifeline for Chet Black Cock Airport and the industry as a whole here. Give us a sense of how much ground Hong Kong has to make up. Yes, I think Hong Kong uh, will benefit tremendously you know, from China opening up. But uh, if you recall, uh, Hong Kong had al also uh, uh, discarded the zero COVID strategy and opened up uh, a few months back. Uh, so this is the next step. You know, China is a big market uh, for Hong Kong, uh, but not only China. Uh, there are many other uh, big markets that have already opened up, you know, for example, ASEAN uh, and travelers from ASEAN, as well as uh, big markets like India, uh, Europe and America can all go to, to Hong Kong now. You know? So I think it is a matter of uh, uh, months you know, before uh, Hong Kong regains uh, its uh, preeminence uh, as a hub in the region. And just talking about where, you know, the outbound travel for Chinese tourists, I, I wonder, some people seem to think this is going to be slow going. When do you think, you know, international flight volumes can start to pick up here? And, and eventually we could see that recover back to those pre-pandemic levels. Well, actually, the, the opening has taken place uh, uh, at an opportune time. You know, it is uh, Chinese New Year coming up, you know. Uh, so I don't think international airlines will be able to uh, capitalize on the Chinese New Year surge. Uh, but uh, it will be an indication, you know, as to uh, how much the uh, pent-up demand is uh, from China. And I would expect that uh, by the time you get to the, uh, the uh, traditional uh, summer peak, uh, we will see a lot of uh, uh, airlines already being able to uh, put in uh, the requisite number of flights to meet the demand. Subhas, so, uh, very quickly here as well, I, the whole flying experience has changed. Uh, you know, when do we actually get back to the sort of standards that we had pre-pandemic? Yes, I think that um, uh, that has got a lot to do with the ability of the uh, industry to bring back uh, the workforce. As you know, many people have left the industry after 
uh, it was shuttered, you know, for more than two and a half years. Uh, so to bring people back, uh, the uh, airlines will have to uh, uh, redouble their efforts uh, in terms of uh, wages and benefits. Uh, but apart from that, there is also uh, uh, training and retraining of, uh, of staff who have uh, joined and rejoined. Uh, this also takes time, you know, uh, and this has been uh, uh, escalating uh, to a very uh, good level uh, before the end of the year. But with China now uh, opening up as well, I think the industry needs to uh, move uh, faster. And I think things are going uh, quite well at the moment. And uh, in terms of, um, you know, adverse reaction to, to the service levels, that has come down uh, quite, uh, quite uh, uh, significantly. We also see see that uh, on-time departures have yeah. also improved. Baggage, uh, misplaced baggage losses uh, have also uh, come down quite significantly, even during the uh, Christmas and New Year season.